Hey guys, welcome to Process Midledge. I hope you all are doing good and have watched my previous videos. If not, what are you waiting for? Go for those after the end of this video. Now, without wasting any time further, let's get into today's topic. So today's topic is mitral stenosis, which is a very important topic in medicine. So mitral stenosis is basically narrowing of heart's mitral valve orifice. Okay, coming to the etiology of mitral stenosis. It includes rheumatic fever, congenital mitral stenosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, that is SLE, then atrial myxoma. It behaves like mitral stenosis and mitral annular calcification, that is annulus of the mitral valve, it gets calcified. Out of these, the most common cause for mitral stenosis is rheumatic fever. Okay. Apart from this, there can be other etiologies also, but these are the most important etiologies. Now coming to the severity of mitral stenosis, it is according to the mitral valve orifice size so severity can be minimal mild moderate and severe so minimal is when mitral valve orifice is more than 2.5 centimeter square okay mild is when mitral valve orifice area is 1.4 to 2.5 centimeter square moderate is when 1 to 1.4 centimeter square and severe less than 1 centimeter square so this is how we grade the mitral stenosis that is uh, the severity of the mitral stenosis. Now coming to the pathophysiology of mitral stenosis. So in mitral stenosis, the blood accumulates in the left atrium because of the narrow valve area. So the blood accumulates in the left atrium. As a result, this blood will cause left atrial dilatation. So left atrial dilatation makes the left atrium prone to have atrial fibrillation, which is a type of arrhythmia. And left atrial dilation also leads to stasis of blood in left atrium as a result because of the stasis it leads to thrombus formation and finally it leads to systemic embolism on the other hand because of increased blood accumulation in the left atrium there is increase in the left atrial pressure and this gets transmitted to the pulmonary veins leading to pulmonary venous hypertension and from there it gets transmitted to the pulmonary arteries leading to pulmonary arterial hypertension and because of the pulmonary arterial hypertension, the right ventricle has to pump the blood uh, against a greater resistance. So this leads to right ventricular hypertrophy, then right ventricular dilatation. And because of this right ventricular dilatation, it leads to right ventricular failure. Also because of right ventricular dilatation, the tricuspid valve ring, it undergoes dilatation because the ventricle is expanding. As a result, the tricuspid valve ring is also expanding. So it leads to dilatation. And this finally leads to functional tricuspid regurgitation, which also ends with right ventricular failure. So these are the reasons for right ventricular failure, which we see in mitral stenosis. Now coming to the clinical features. So coming to the symptoms first, mild to moderate mitral stenosis may remain asymptomatic. And once the patient is symptomatic, then there is gradual deterioration of the patient. Now coming to the symptoms, it include dyspnea, very important, which is initially exertional but later progress to breathlessness at rest. Then we have orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Then we have pulmonary edema symptoms. Pulmonary edema develops when the pulmonary capillary pressure exceeds 25 mm Hg. Then we have hemoptysis. It is due to the pink frothy sputum of pulmonary edema and can also be due to the pulmonary infarction which occurs as a result of pulmonary embolism. Now coming to the other symptoms, this includes palpitation which is due to atrial fibrillation most commonly and then we have fatigue, loss of appetite and peripheral edema. This is a feature of right ventricular failure. Now coming to the physical signs. So on general examination, we can see peripheral and facial cyanosis in severe cases of mitral stenosis. Peripheral edema is seen in case of heart failure, that is right ventricular failure. Then we will also get low volume pulse. BP is slightly reduced because of the decrease in the cardiac output and JVP, that is jugular venous pressure is elevated in case of heart failure. Now coming to inspection and palpation, a precordial bulge is seen in case of long standing cases of mitral stenosis. Apex bit will be tapping in character in case of mitral stenosis. And because of right ventricular hypertrophy, we will see a visible and palpable left parasternal heave. Okay, that is due to right ventricular hypertrophy. Now coming to the auscultation findings. First is loud first heart sound. This is due to closure of the disease mitral valve with rapid apposition of the leaflets. So this word is important. That is rapid apposition, which leads to loud first heart sound. 
Now coming to the next finding in auscultation that is loud second heart sound that is basically the pulmonary component of the second heart sound not the aortic component and this is due to pulmonary hypertension. Now the very specific murmur of mitral stenosis it is a low pitched rough and rumbling murmur and it is best heard at the apex with the help of the bell of the stethoscope with the patient lying in the left lateral position. And it is a mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation. So, mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation. This is the most important word here. And it is a low pitched, rough, and rumbling murmur. Okay, that is the character of the murmur of mitral stenosis. And as I have mentioned, because of the right ventricular dilatation, there is dilatation of the ring of the tricuspid bulb. So, as a result, we will get murmur of tricuspid regurgitation that is actually functional tricuspid regurgitation. Now coming to the investigations which we do in mitral stenosis, first is electrocardiogram. It will show left atrial enlargement, then right ventricular hypertrophy and atrial fibrillation. Then radiology. Radiological features of mitral stenosis include, first due to left atrial enlargement, there will be straightening of the left heart margin. Okay, there will be straightening of the left heart margin. That is, this left heart margin will become straight. Then there will be widening of the carinal angle and elevation of the left main bronchus. Then due to pulmonary venous hypertension, there will be prominence of the upper lobe veins, which is also known as stag's antler sign. This word is very important. Then we will see curly A and curly B lines. And then we will also see bat's wing appearance. Okay, bat's wing sign. Then due to pulmonary arterial hypertension, there will be prominence of the pulmonary arteries and their main branches and because of pulmonary arterial hypertension there is also right ventricular enlargement and we can also see the calcification of mitral valve on radiology radiology of mitral valve is itself an important topic which can be asked separately in the university so i have made a separate dedicated video for radiological features which we see in mitral stenosis which you can watch by clicking on the i button now coming to the echocardiogram findings echocardiogram findings includes it will show mitral stenosis and it will also show the calcification of mitral valve if it is present now coming to the complications of mitral stenosis we have already discussed it that is first will be atrial fibrillation then there is pulmonary hypertension leading to right ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular failure then because of atrial fibrillation it can lead to systemic thromboembolism and dysphagia why dysphagia because of esophageal compression by the left atrium which is enlarged okay so now coming to the management of mitral stenosis, it includes medical management and surgical management. So medical management in that we treat atrial fibrillation with the help of digoxin and beta blockers. Then anticoagulants have to be given to reduce the risk of systemic thromboembolism which occurs due to atrial fibrillation. Next is treatment of right ventricular failure with diuretics and salt restriction. Now coming to the surgical management, if the patient is symptomatic, Despite the appropriate medical treatment, then we go for surgeries. It includes balloon valvuloplasty and mitral valve replacement. Any of these can be done. So that's it guys. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like, share, subscribe and comment and also press the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video. And you can also click on the playlist which is being shown on the right of the screen to look for other mitral valve disorders.